All right, now for the carboxy end, they, they actually did something kind of similar, uh, simpler here. Carboxy terminus is protected by formation of a simple ester. I don't really understand why this works that well, but anyway. Oh yeah, they're just like, so how could we make this into a methyl ester? What would we have to add to make this into a methyl ester? Methoxy? Usually we oh, think of it as methanol. Remember, it won't look like methanol after it attacks. That's our simple esterification reaction. So we're still using the same reactions we saw for carboxylic acid derivatives. The first step would look kind of like this. At some point, the methanol is going to deprotonate, and this leaving group is going to leave. So after the uh, carbonyl reforms, we've turned this into an ester. You could also use ethanol and make an ethyl ester. Now, I really don't understand why this is protected, um, because this is still uh, electrophilic. I don't, uh, in fact, it seems like this should be more electrophilic, because we don't need to worry about uh, competition with the hydrogen here. So I really don't understand why this group works. Maybe your instructor said why in the lecture notes. Well, you said they were like slightly, but they were bad, so we should never use them. We should focus on the other safe terminus protecting groups. Oh, he doesn't like this protecting yeah. yeah. strategy. Okay, so um, that's all they talk about in the textbook. So let's take a look at your lecture notes. He also didn't like it like. because the way to get rid of it is H plus H2O in the meat and get it. Right. In and the problem with that is you can hydrolyze the rest of the molecule too. Yeah. Okay. Could you take that down? Yeah. He also talked about like coupling reagents. All right, so he said you can make an ester, but it's not very good. Now, he actually uh, said that to, uh... all right, something else that you could put on then. Is you could put this on. This gives us a different type of ester. Benzylester. Yeah, a benzyl ester. That's a good point. Um, and the reason this is good is because, because this benzylic carbon is so reactive, as we talked about earlier, we can actually get rid of this by doing that hydrogenation reaction again. This is the hydrogenolysis reaction. It turns out that you can kind of hydrogenate the benzylic carbon. We know that we, don't, we, we can't normally hydrogenate uh, we don't normally hydrogenate alkane carbons, but we know that we can do lots of unusual things with benzylic carbons. So we can basically undo this with this hydrogen, uh, and that will basically take us back to here. Well, I can see why he would prefer that, because that's, uh, we don't need to worry about that breaking the other amide bonds. All right, so it looks like this is one of the protecting strategies that they preferred. We can put in the protecting group with a benzylic alcohol, and then we can get rid of it with a kind of hydrogenation. Okay. Uh, another uh, uh, thing that they suggested was a tert butyl. How would we get this tert butyl ether in the first place? With the tert butyl alcohol. Tert butyl alcohol. So again, it would be an esterification. Uh, additional elimination, and then you can get rid of this with trifluoroacetic acid. Just has to be memorized that that turns out to what deprotect. Is this what? Well, we're making a tert butyl ester, and you can do that by treating the carboxylic acid with tert butyl alcohol. Does that make sense? Because it's just our normal, it's just our normal esterification reaction. The alcohol will attack, unforming the carbonyl, and then when we reform the carbonyl, that kicks off the OH leaving group. At some point, the alcohol is going to lose its hydrogen. And this is a, a, a superior way to, uh, to protect because, because um, it, there's convenient ways to deprotect. And again, I still don't understand why these are very good protecting groups. This is still electrophilic. 
So let's say that now we have protected the N terminus of glycine. Maybe we've done that with our BOC. And we've protected the C terminus of alanine. Maybe we've done that with our tert butyl ether, tert butyl ester. Now we actually want to have this N terminus attack this carboxy terminus. And the problem here, remember that this reaction doesn't work that well because there's competition from the acid-base reaction. So we need some type of activating agent to make this work. However, this is a ticklish business because we don't want to activate so much that we deprotect the things that are already protected. So we need to use very special activating agents that will facilitate the, the reaction we want without facilitating any other reactions. So all they mentioned in the book here was DCC. Did your instructor talk about that, DCC? No. Oh, they didn't even mention that? Oh, no, he did, sorry. Okay, so they would add these two things together in the presence of DCC. And what we want is basically a carboxy activating reagent. We want something that will make this, uh, that will activate this carboxy group that we want to be attacked. Well, it turns out that DCC is one of these carboxy uh, activating agents. So in the presence of DCC, we're going to get glycine and the alanine to connect to each other, and then we would use our deprotection strategies to get rid of the protecting groups on both ends. Uh, and it looks like your instructor just mentioned a bunch of other carboxy activating agents. Yeah. Whoops. DCC looks like this. Okay, this is DCC. By the way, these are not benzene rings. These are just cyclohexyl rings. Now remember, what's our basic problem here? The basic problem is that we want the nitrogen to attack the carboxy group. But we've said many times that this reaction doesn't give good yields because the nitrogen might just instead deprotonate this oxygen over here. So what would be nice is we kind of want to change this into a, a better leading group. We want to change this into a better leading group um, or something that doesn't have a hydrogen on it. Well. protonate this nitrogen, but instead now it's going to protonate the DCC. Who, who is there in the DCC that could get protonated? Um, let's see. Oh, no, minus charge the N. The nitrogen. This carbon is not basic, but this nitrogen over here has a lone pair, and there's also a resonance structure where the nitrogen has a full negative charge. Since that has a resonance structure with a negative charge, the nitrogen is basic. So. We can do this proton transfer where the proton goes from here to here. 
Well, that's progress already because now we don't need to worry about the carboxy group protonating the nitrogen from the alanine. Now, however, we, we still need to do some work because now this is not electrophilic at all. As long as this has a negative charge, it's not going to be electrophilic at all. But now, now that this carboxy has depro deprotonated, is this now a nucleophile or an electrophile? Electrophile? This oxygen is a nucleophile. This oxygen is a nucleophile. And who in the DCC would it like to attack? The carbon. The carbon. Not the nitrogen. Um, this is uh, not the nitrogen. Remember this positive charge is really spread over the whole molecule. This is kind of like attacking a carbonyl carbon. Way back earlier, I think we saw that if somebody with, has a positive charge, but they've already got a complete octet, it's actually the thing that they're attached to that becomes the electrophile. So this positive charge here has made this more electrophilic. And notice this really does look a lot like attacking a carbonyl carbon. We're going to kick off the pi bond over here onto this nitrogen to get rid of that positive charge. Mm -hmm.